Okay, you're welcome along to our look ahead to the League of Ireland action in the Premier Division this weekend. And I'm delighted to say I'm joined on the programme by former Fun Harps captain Keith Cowan. Keith, you're very welcome. Thanks very much, Jeremy. Thanks for having me on. Keith, it's it's all getting very interesting here in the in the Premier Division. We're just about to reach the halfway stage this this weekend. All of a sudden, St. Pat's have joined Shamrock Rovers at the top end of the table. Uh, Sligo Rovers slipping ever so slightly off the pace. Derry City continuing to enjoy this good run of form. And Harps, well, those defeats against Derry and St. Pat's on Monday night now sees them drop into the to the to the bottom three. So before we look at this weekend's games, Keith. For yourself, it's it's been a big week as well. Um, I can start by offering you congratulations on 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 your move to to Duncan and Swifts. You signed a deal at the weekend. I'm sure you're relishing the chance to to play for another season at senior football. Yeah, look, it's it's one that I'm really looking forward to. Um, I spoke to Dean Shields, the manager there, um, you know, a couple of times over the last few weeks, and I suppose uh, after leaving Glenthorn, um, you know, there was. There was a couple of different uh, offers on, on the table. Um, there was two clubs in, in Belfast. You know, uh, again, it's that commitment of how many times can you get up the road? I suppose you know, still still being a teacher working in College Shelley. Um, you know, you, you have to that that has to be your first port of call, and you have to make sure that you're doing that job right. So, no, I'm very looking forward to the challenge. I suppose not playing as much as I, I would have wanted this this season with Glen Torn. You know, the, the club's had a great year and, you know, European football again, you know, coming up in a, in a few weeks' time is, is great for the club. But, uh, look, very, very much looking forward to the challenge that uh, Dungan will bring, you know, not the season that they would have wanted last year. I know Dean's come in there and he's tried to, um, you know, adapt his style of things uh, to the players and, and to the team that's there. I know then... That they had a big clear out of players, and they're at the minute they're they're signing. You know, obviously myself has come in. Um, uh, Joe McCready there from Balamina came in yesterday, and you know they're adding uh, another guy from Balamina. Um, James Knowles as well has has come in, so they're they're adding league experience, which is required. You know, because it seemed to be the youthful side of things that was you know carrying them through last season, and you know have a lot of good young players in there. So. Hopefully, I can bring a bit of experience to it and uh, help them push up the table for next season. You were eighteen months at Glentorn, Keith. A short but a successful time at that club. Yeah, very much so. You know, um, it was uh, it was a, you know it was it was a huge opportunity for me to uh, to move to such a big club. You know, arguably one of the biggest clubs in the country. Um, you know, the success they've had in in recent years was massive. You know, all. All, all across the competitions, winning leagues, cups, you know, and again European trips as well, which is which is something that you know I, I never really thought was possible. Um, but you know, I really enjoyed my time there. Met a lot of great people up there. It is it is a very good club, and you know, and they're they're looking to move into the full time sort of uh, way of running a club now. And unfortunately, that, that's something that I couldn't really commit to. Um, but yeah, look, you know, the Irish Cup last season was 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 a dream come true to, to you know to take part in a final and you know and to come out on the on the winning side of it and you know lift that trophy was was an amazing feeling and you know all the kind of years of hard work are sort of culminated in that in that moment and then you know the opportunity of playing European football and you know getting through a tie at home against Torshavn and then you know going to play Motherwell or you know unfortunately it wasn't for us on the night and. But just that experience is is massive and something that you know like I'll always hold dear. Yeah, it's nice for you to be able to say, Keith, that there were other clubs interested as well because you've had your injury problems in your career and well, listen, you keep yourself in good shape. And even though you turn what thirty six in August, it probably says much about your your physical fitness that you're still playing at this level. Yeah, I think it's it's just something that's. Um, become you know part of my daily routine you know is like trying to keep myself in decent shape and you know when you have these setbacks and you have these injuries you know uh touch wood i haven't had any now for 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 a couple of years but anytime they have crept around they've always been kind of uh it's been a, a big enough injury and you know you kind of you, you kind of take stock and see you know where, where do you want to go with it and look that, that desire there is is always to play and to try and you know test yourself at the top level so I'm just delighted that you know that the phone rang and that if there was a few there was a few managers interested and uh, you know it just it's worked out for me and it's, and it's worked out for Dungannon that that that's the one that I that I put pen to paper on. 
Yeah, well, your friends and, and football people here in Donegal be keeping a close eye on, on Dungan and Swift, same once the new season gets up and running. Keith and Anthony Gorman is part of the management set up there as well, which is an, another local link. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I can't deny that Anthony had a small part to play and, you know, me uh, deciding to go to go to Dungannon, I know Anthony very well and, you know, uh, like I, I know what he brings and he's, you know, he's a, he's a proper football man. So, you know, he's, he's not going to be up there to waste his time. So he has, he has goals that he wants to reach up there too. And, you know, I'm really excited by the prospect of working with him again. So yeah, look, that's is uh, that's just that's it. That's as I said, it's it's one of the reasons why I went back up there, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can do something up in Dungannon, and you know, sort of bring bring a bit of pride back to the club, and you know, uh, hopefully push them up the table, like I said. Okay, well, looking ahead to this weekend's action then in the League of Ireland, Keith um, Harps hosting Longford Town on Friday night, and they go into that game. After two disappointing defeats, a close game against Derry, which they were perhaps unfortunate to lose out, and then on Monday night against St. Pat's. Played well in the first half by all accounts, but um, St. Pat's easing to victory in the end. Yeah, it was a, it was a strange game. You know, we, I watched the game, and, you know, first half especially, I thought, I thought Hartford were, were right in the game. You know, they really, they really tested Pat's at times, and, you know, there was a Jewish shout for a penalty, which, you know, which from my eyes, and I know a lot of the Hearts fans at the time as well, and, you know, the commentators were thinking it was definitely a penalty. Uh, ruled out by the lines when the referee wasn't interested. He's, he's actually, I think it's, it's actually come off a Hearts player, but then yet all the referees give a corner. So it was hard to really, I don't know if he was going to balance it out that way, which, you know, and you can see Ollie was, Ollie was really annoyed on the sideline. You could see the players at halftime, you know, Remonstrating with the referee why or how he, he he couldn't have seen it, and then I suppose uh, from that there you know Pat's right took control of the game and you know their tallies month the minute Ronan Collins come up with a great a great goal great individual play inside the box maybe it could have been Mark Coyle an opportunity maybe to hook the ball clear before that it's come to Cahill in the box he's shown great feet and he smashed it past Mark McGinley in the net to, to put them ahead of the break so you know. Um, Disappointing from Harps that, that type of way, as I said, they started really well in the game, end of the second half then, and when uh, when when Pat's got the second, it was just sort of it was just sort of plain sailing for them. Then they were knocking the ball around and and you know like really just growing in confidence, and Harps just seemed a bit dead on their feet. Um, you could see the heads had dropped slightly, unfortunately. So you know they'll be looking to to Friday night to put that right. They'll not be happy. I'm sure once they watch the game back and they'll, they'll be doing a video analysis and things, and there'll be a few. Fingers pointed, no doubt, and lads won't be happy. So hopefully there'll be a massive response uh, come Friday night, which is a which is a really big game for Hearts. Yeah, it sure is. And uh, Hagerty and 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 Ollie Horgan were forced to make a few changes as well. Keith, it's interesting. Ryan Rainey coming in for his first start. Connor Barry played for the first time in, in the starting eleven since the very first game of the season, and then they brought in the young lads off the bench. There were three debutants, uh, which is always good to see. Oh yeah, look, you know, I suppose it's always great to see that pathway, you know, from from the academy to the first team. Uh, you know, great to see the young lads getting a run. You know, unfortunately, it was one of them ones kind of is the game gone, and to give them that experience, I suppose that doesn't really matter as long as they're getting that experience. Um, you know, in first team action in Premier Division football, which is massive for them at that age. You know, the local lad Ryan Rainey coming into the centre of the park, didn't really put a foot wrong. Uh, they push uh, Will Seymour to right back and then Ethan Boyle over to the left-hand side. But Ryan has done really well He's, you know, for coming in his first start. You know, as I said, a lot of, a lot, a lot of pressure on him, with a lot of eyes on him, a bit of expectancy there. But against that midfield of, you know, Benson and Forrester for uh, uh, for Pats, you know, he he's done really well. And, you know, as I say, I couldn't put a foot wrong. I'm hoping now... That maybe he gets a couple of running games. You know, I know it might have been injuries or suspensions that might have got him in there, but hopefully he's showing Ollie and, H and Higgerty that, or sorry, Ollie and Paul Higgerty that um, you know that there is trust there and that he, that he that he can do a job. And as I say, hopefully he's not just judged maybe on one game that he gets a couple of games now in the team and uh, and see where it takes them. Yeah, because when you have injuries and suspensions, there is an opportunity for players like like Ryan Rainey to, to step into the breach. And of course, Harps now dealing with the situation where Mark Russell has departed and gone to Greenock Martin. Was that something that came as a surprise to you, Keith? I suppose, uh, you know, you, you haven't really seen him feature in the last few weeks. And, you know, I still keep in contact with some of the guys. And I think maybe it would be 
a case where Mark maybe just wasn't happy here, you know, maybe he wasn't getting as much football as he thought he would have got. And it's, it's always that case as well, where, you know, some guy, you know, if he's traveling across the water and I'm not really well with Mark's from Scotland and, you know, he's come over to a, a, a couple of years ago, done a great job. I think maybe he always had aspirations of maybe moving home and trying to get a club or, you know, to further his career, or, you know, so um, not saying that maybe Grant Martin is a, is, a, is a massive step up, but, you know, he, uh, the, the boy has to be happy playing his football and maybe that just wasn't the case this year. Yeah, well, he did enjoy a good career with Harps and we can wish him all the best and in, in what's another new chapter for him and his career. And the hope is, I suppose, Keith, is that um, there won't be any more departures because Ollie Horgan has got a pretty decent squad there. Yeah, you know, we were really excited at the start of the year when we saw the squad that Ollie was putting together. You know, a lot of a lot of experience in there. You know, we, we, we mentioned the likes of Ethan Boyle, you know, uh, obviously Dave Webster there before, Adam Foley, you know, trying to keep the trying to keep the, the basis of, of last year's squad together. You know, he's put, you know, he has, he has got a lot of good players in, um, you know, so like we're seeing the squad obviously stretch. Now we know Webster's injured this weekend as well. He's got ligament damage. Um, we know that Carol Sullivan will be back in, which is massive, which is a great player for Harps, you know, has popped up with a couple of goals. Uh, Foley seems to be obviously leading the line very well. You know, his position at times, we see him maybe operating on the right or maybe on, on the left at times. And every time he's put down the middle, he, he tends to score. So, you know, there's one where, you know, they have a headache to try and get the balance right. You know, we have Old Abbey up top as well, who's who's done really well in, in recent weeks for me. You know, he's done everything but score, really. You know, he's worked hard. You know, he tries to, he, he sort of plays on the shoulder. He's full of energy. You know, he's very direct. Um, if he can get his goal, and that's kind of the last week or, or the last uh, night there against Pats where he's done really well. He's For me, he's won his penalty because that's going to give him a lift as well. And that's going to give him huge confidence because he's actually doing something for the team. But when that's weird the way, it's kind of like the same old, you know, so it's, it, can, it can be difficult for him. He needs that goal to try and get him, you know, or that couple of extra goals to try and get him up and running. And uh, as I say, when players are injured, when, when, when players are missing through suspension or whatever, they have to reshuffle the pack. So uh, that's why you have a big squad, I suppose. What about Longford Town then, Keith? They haven't really won all that many games in the Premier Division since since uh, their arrival from, from last season. But they have made it hard for the better teams in this division. Yeah, look, I don't suppose, you know, they're propping up the table there, Longford, at, at the moment. But... You know they have they have caused teams trouble. You know more no more notably more than Harps, I suppose. You know the the return fixture or the reverse fixture at the start of the season was a was a nil nil down there. Um, yeah, they have caused team problems. I know they picked up a, they picked up a draw against Dundalk there recently as well. You know they've gone into the Brandywell of the Ray McBride and you know and picked up a point there. So you know there'll be no mugs. You know they'll be looking at this as a massive opportunity for themselves to pick up points too. So you know again, Ollie never takes any team lightly. He'll be getting the boys right up for this one. They'll be disappointed themselves. I think they might have maybe one, one and eight, you know, which is, which is, you know, if, if we look at the start of the season, how things have went, it's, be, you know, it's a, it's a disappointing run and it's, you know, it can become a rough and it's not, you know, as, as much as winning can become a habit, losing can become a really bad habit as well. So this is a game where, 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 where Harps, will, you know, will want to be bang up for it. They'll be, they'll, they should be falling out the mouth, jump on the bit to get out on, on Friday night and sort of get that three points back on the thing and, you know, and flip, flip their season around again. Yeah, because they have played well in recent games. They played well against Sligo Rovers and Ball Buffet and again against Derry City. And OK, didn't manage to take anything from either game, Keith, but a similar performance, you'd like to think that should be good enough to get the better of Longford. Yeah, and that's that'll be the most frustrating thing I think for Harps players at, at the moment and fans and, and and management. It's the capabilities, you know, of going out and beating the teams, you know, like the start of the season, beating Bowes, beating Dundalk, you know, like huge results, beating Derry and the Brandywell. Uh, you know, they they went to Tala, you know, a couple of weeks before and you know and did really well. And you know, as I think as well as any Harps done and in, in recent any Harps team has done in recent years, going to Tala and putting it right up to. To, to the league leaders, you know, who have a you know a wealth of players, and you know to you know to try and stifle what what any opposition are are going to bring. But you know, Harps did a, did a really good job against them. Really unfortunate with the with the manner that they conceded. And again, that's something that, that we have seen over the last couple of months, I suppose, is the manner in which Harps are conceding goals. 
uh, takeaway from maybe Monday night, which was uh, which 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 was just seemed to be you know one where um, Pat's just had a real a real good night and Harps had an off night, but Harps right in games. It's maybe a set piece. It's maybe a, you know uh, just a lack of concentration that seems to be costing them, and that's something you know maybe that's that can be the difference. You know maybe. Is there is there a lack of leadership in there? I know the captain, obviously Webster, has been out the last couple of last couple of games. He's a, he's a huge loss for them. He's a great player. You know, he, he seems to be the ones that like get them gets the players going, gets them organised. So the sooner he gets back, the better. And uh, no, the sooner I have to get back to winning ways, I think the better as well. Yeah, well, all of a sudden they're they're looking over their shoulders, aren't they, at, at, at Waterford and, and Longford below them and two teams that have moved ahead of them in the table, Dundalk and Derry City, they meet on Friday night as well, a big game at Oriel Park and given Derry's good run of form, they can approach this one with, with plenty of confidence, Keith. Yeah, definitely, you know, uh, Dundalk are very, very up and down at the minute, obviously, we know that there's been there. The managerial appointment, Vinnie Perth has come in for his, for his second spell, you know, after getting the sack, you know, uh, couple of months ago so he's he's back in the fold he's you know he's got them he's got them back to winning ways um you know Derry going there since since Ray Higgins has, has come in the end of April has been fantastic you know and Derry have really really picked up they've done really well I think it might be five wins five draws maybe two lo- or sorry one loss and that was that was actually against Harps uh that night in the Ryan McBride so no Derry seem to be flying you know they've uh whatever Race done since he's come in. He's got you know a nice mix in there. Um, you know a bit of a bit of youth. Obviously, we're on a boys' young Melton man doing exceptionally well. You know, five goals playing right back, right side centre half at times. You know, he's he's done exceptionally well. You know, got the equaliser against Sligo there uh, Monday night, which is superb. You can just see that the confidence is flowing through the young fella, and you know, and long may it last. I suppose on the flip side of that for De- for for Derry. They have uh, young Will Patchen, who is actually on loan from Dundalk. So, you know, he's been actually their top scorer so far this year. I think he's maybe on six or seven goals. And, you know, the, the, maybe the, the, the thought of losing him, I'm sure Rui, behind the scenes, has been working with the man. He's been trying to get players in. Now, obviously, the, 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 tr- the transfer window is opening very shortly. So he'll be looking to, to strengthen. And if, if Will Patchen goes back to Dundalk, like it looks like he will, then there'll be there'll be uh, there'll definitely be a space there to fill. There you go. Well, the top two sides in the Premier Division are also in action on Friday night. Keith St. Pat's at Waterford and Shamrock Rovers, who lost last weekend against Bowes, they'll be hoping for a good result against Drogheda and Tala. Yeah, you know that that's one that I say. I think uh, Shamrock, uh, Shamrock Rovers uh, very disappointed there with their with with their loss against Bohemians uh, on Monday night. So they'll be looking to get back to winning ways. Uh, they dictated the game for long, uh, for long spells. Had lots of chances. Hit the bar early on. Um, Bradley came out and said, "You know, I think it's they had enough chances to 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 win a, a couple of games after the first half, and should have been well out of sight." But look, it's all about converting your chances, and and they didn't do that. And it was uh, it was great to see young Georgie Kelly get another goal for Bowles, and uh, you know, really really setting the league alight now. And in, in, in the last couple of weeks, you know, leading the goal scoring charts with with eleven goals. So it's great to see a local man uh, in, in the League of Ireland tearing it up there. So, yeah, um, Shams will be looking to get back to winning ways. Drogheda, you know, who looked, you know, a bit of a dark horse there come the, the sort of the middle of the season there. Last couple of weeks have, do, have been doing really well. Obviously, the last two weeks they have struggled. Um, you know, Bo's putting five past them, which is, uh, you know, and again, Georgie Kelly getting four of those. That was last weekend. And then... Um, you know, another defeat there. I think it was Dundalk there last time out. So look, they Tim Clancy will want to get those guys organised as well. You know, they've a lot of experience in there. You know, they're they're, they're a good side. Just come just come up. So you now they'll be looking to put that right as well. And again, Shannon Grovers will be looking to you know to get back on top and to put a bit of daylight between themselves and Pat. And the weekend's fixtures come to a conclusion on Saturday night. Then Keith with with Sligo against Bowes. Georgie Kelly uh, could well be up against a, a former teammate of your own, Shane Blaney, who's been in and out of the Sligo team, but he, he played against Derry the other night, didn't he? So he'll be hoping to keep his place. Yeah, you know, great to see Shane uh, getting a getting a run on the team. I think he'd struggled maybe a, you know, he had a couple of niggles early on in the season and was sort of in and out. But uh, last couple of weeks, he seems to be getting more game time. I think he, he came on against uh, Drogheda, might have been a couple of weeks back, and you know, actually scored in a, in a, in a two-one defeat, but. Great to see him get a goal. 
unfortunately, the, the last night against Derry, it was maybe a, a deflected shot. I think it, it might have just came off him and, you know, I heard the ball into the net. That, that's that goal that we talked about earlier there from Ronan Boyce. So, you know, great to see Shane. Uh, I, said, I said I played with him and he was part of the, the, the car school from the dry arts there up to Balafe many years ago. So, you know, great to see him, good young lad. And hope to hope that he just uh, maintains that good run of form and, 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 and stays injury free. Okay, then, Keith. And finally, just uh, a word on the fact that we, you know, we're still in this easing of, of restrictions and uh, the fans uh, allowed back in uh, to, to watch to watch the action at Premier Division level. It was great to see, uh, a, you know, a decent crowd there for the, for the Derry City game, 100 or so spectators watching that one. The result didn't go their way, but there'll be fans back again in Bal Buffet on Friday night, Keith. And they always have a part to play, don't they, uh, in the home fixtures for, for Harps? Yeah, I suppose uh, no, you know, no more so now than ever before. That like that that Harps will need that lift. You know, I think the the season can be quite a grind at times. You know, and uh, like obviously they had they had that great start. You know, they had sort of having this lull now in the middle where you know things just don't seem to be going right for them. They aren't getting that rub of the green that they did early on. You know, so the the fans will have a part to play, and no doubt uh, when 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 Harps gave them some this year, about they'll be right behind them, and I think it'll be it'll be massive for them. Whoever whoever finds their way into the game on uh, on on Friday night, and whoever's standing up behind the behind the gate or the fence or whatever it is, you know, they'll all play their part too. So now massive to get the to get the fans back in. You know, like there's no there's no better feeling as a player, you know, sometimes when you go out there at Fan Park and, you know, and you know, you know, everyone's behind you and, and like really spurring you on. So, you know, the, there's no better roar than, than, a, than a Fan Park roar at times. So, you know, it'll be great to it'll be great to get as many people into the games and, and just get right behind the team again. Okay, Keith, it's been great to talk to you again. Uh, we'll have full match commentary on Friday night. Uh, Declan Boyle will be joining myself in commentary and we'll be in association with McNulty's Top Oil Filling Station and Mace Store in Stranorder. We're looking forward to that. That's uh, Friday night from around about 10 to 8. So Harps against Longford, one of uh, five games in the Premier Division this coming weekend. Another busy programme of fixtures and we're looking forward to some uh, plenty of entertainment and hopefully a Harps victory. Keith Cowan, thanks for, thanks for now. Cheers, Jeremy. Thank you.